Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. The Nixperia saga has finally taken a turn. ASML CEO and German industrial giant Bosch have issued a warning urging the Netherlands to address the issue immediately. It is understood that due to the continued shortage of related chips, thousands of workers at Bosch's three factories are facing shutdowns. Nissan Kaishu is reducing production by 1,400 vehicles, and the global automotive industry is being paralyzed by a tiny chip. This farce, orchestrated by the Dutch government, is now pushing the entire European manufacturing sector towards a precipice like a domino effect. When ASML CEO Christophe Fouquet broke his silence, when Bosch issued an ultimatum, and when ZF had only a week's worth of inventory left, this absurd drama unfolding in the Netherlands may be nearing its end. The Dutch government's initial statement of no regrets may now appear to be the last harsh remark uttered by the Dutch Minister of Economy. The incident dates back to September 30th of this year, when the Netherlands, citing national security, invoked Cold War era laws to seize control of Nixperia's headquarters in the Netherlands. Chinese company Wingtech Technology subsequently lost actual control of its Dutch headquarters. The Dutch side cited supply chain security as the reason and claimed the decision was unrelated to the US's real-time transparency rules. However, publicly available court documents from the Netherlands show that US officials had already commented on the issue in June, demanding the removal of the Chinese executives from Nixperia or face being placed on the entity list. Combined with the events of late September, the Nixperia incident in the Netherlands was not a coincidence. It was a planned robbery, spearheaded by the US and implemented by the Netherlands, aimed at suppressing Chinese companies. Before the Chinese acquisition, Nixperia not only faced industry-wide doubts about its profitability, but also had significant debt to repay. It was only after the Chinese acquisition that Nixperia was gradually pulled out of its financial slump. Today, the Chinese market accounts for 40% or more of Nixperia's global market share, and Nixperia has become a core supplier for several European automakers. At this critical juncture, the Netherlands' forceful seizure of actual control over Nixperia is, frankly, driven by envy of the market breakthroughs achieved by Chinese companies in related fields and regret for selling Nixperia, a company that was essentially a mother goose for orders, to Chinese companies. Thus, this power grab occurred. The Netherlands attempted to localize the company again and seize control of key supply chains by taking actual control of Nixperia's headquarters. However, China did not sit idly by. After Wingtech Technology repeatedly spoke out about the matter, China promptly implemented export controls on related chip products. Unable to obtain chip products, European companies naturally began to put pressure on the Netherlands. Although the Netherlands controlled the wafer manufacturing process, the packaging, testing, and delivery of related products still had to be completed through chip factories in mainland China. This resulted in the Netherlands' takeover of Nixperia's headquarters being essentially an empty shell without independent shipping capabilities. Faced with external questioning and pressure, the Netherlands chose to cool down the situation. On the one hand, the Minister of Economic Affairs spoke with Chinese representatives, but failed to reach a consensus on the matter. On the other hand, the Netherlands began seeking support from Europe and the United States, hoping to solidify the security risk 
posed by Nexperia's involvement with Chinese companies. However, the US and Europe have not voiced support for the Netherlands on this issue. Instead, ASML CEO Jean-Jacques Fouquet and Bosch have issued statements. ASML CEO Fouquet stated, The key is communication before the situation escalates, but this time it may have been the other way around, clearly pointing out the mistakes made by the Netherlands in handling the issue and blaming the Dutch government for the current situation. China's Ministry of Commerce's response was incisive, confusing right and wrong, reversing black and white, and acting unilaterally. These three idioms are used precisely and aptly. The statement that before the Dutch government issued its executive order on September 30, the global semiconductor supply chain was stable and secure, directly points to who is the instigator of this supply chain crisis. Dutch political scientist Jorgen Overbeck offered a more blunt assessment, utterly foolish. The fact that a country's scholars publicly criticize their own government's decisions speaks volumes about the severity of the problem. The Netherlands' actions this time are essentially an attempt to forcibly intervene in the market through administrative means, using political considerations to hijack business decisions. However, even their excuse of protecting domestic industries is untenable. Nexperia was already operating normally in the Netherlands, employing Dutch workers, paying Dutch taxes, and contributing to the Dutch economy. This self-destructive action is truly baffling. Now, it seems the Netherlands needs to accelerate the resolution of the negative impacts caused by these issues. ASML's statement shows that the Dutch business community is at least clear-headed. They understand that in today's globalized world, no country or company can remain unaffected. Supply chain resilience is not built on administrative orders, but on market mechanisms, mutual benefit, and long-term trust. A single administrative order can destroy this trust overnight, but rebuilding it may take years, or even decades. The predicaments of companies like Bosch and ZF precisely expose the fragility of Europe's supply chain system. If the Netherlands does not take swift action to resolve these issues, the entire European industrial system and supply chain will inevitably pay the price. This could be Europe's most costly mistake in recent years. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.